Hello. The piece we're going to learn today is called Ines. It's from this book and it's on page six. I'll start off by playing you the whole piece. You'll notice that there are several new kind of things happening there. One of them is that in the first line there are some low bass notes that are fingered bass notes. We will deal with that as a separate section. It's what I think of as an introduction. We'll leave that till last. There's a very similar thing happens on the last line. Again, we'll leave that till last. So when we play it, we're going to ignore, to start with, the first line and the last line. It's just an introduction and an ending there. We're going to deal with the main part of the piece, which has got the main thing in that I want you to practice here. Now you will notice that some of the notes are in pairs. There's a lower note pointing down where most of the no notes are pointing upwards there. The very, very first thing we're going to do is to leave those notes out. When two notes are written above each other like that, they are to be played at the same time, normally. But what we need to do first is to learn the tune, which is all the upward pointing notes. So leave out the lower notes for the moment. The sections we're going to divide that middle bit into are as follows. From here to there, that E there, we're going to call that section A. Starting on the next note, the D, up to there, that A, we're going to call that section B. Starting from that A there, up to the end of line six, we're going to call that section C. So I would like you to work out those notes, only the upward pointing notes, making sure that these G sharps are G sharps. That is also a G sharp because it's in the same bar as that sharp sign. String three, fret one. The other thing you're going to need to remember is about the rhythm, the joined up notes, the quavers are half beat notes, they're quick, normal notes, crotchets, one beat notes, and that is a minim, that is a two beat note, it's going to last for longer than the rest of the bar. So I'm going to play you the tune, only the tune, not the bottom notes. I'm going to play it in those, those sections and you can listen to it and you can play along with me. So I'll count up to two, one, two. That was section A. You might notice that both of the lines are pretty much the same, apart from the last note being a bit shorter because we need to fit in the first two notes of section B. Here's section B. I'll count up to three this time. One, two, three. Notice the G sharp at the end. It may seem like an unusual note, 
but it's very close to the A, so it's actually very easy to play. Here's section C. We're starting on the last note of line four here. After two, one, two. And now we come to the interesting bit, adding the bass notes for the two note chords. This is the technique. Practice this, put your first finger on string one, E, your thumb on string six, also E, and gently play those two strings. I say gently because do it too hard, it can go kaplonk. Do it gently, you've got a much better chance of playing the notes simultaneously. When you're happy with that, move your thumb onto string five. string two. So string six in the bass, string five in the bass, string four in the bass. And you can practice that until you're happy with the sound of it. It should be clear and the notes should be both at the same time, simultaneous. So that was the technique. Now we're going to start adding the bass notes into the tune. The first one I want you to do is the last pair of notes on line two. Top note is an E, bass note is an A, string five, and just play those two notes together. You should be pretty confident with that by now. Now, We'll go back to the bar before that. The first pair of notes in the bar, there's an F and a D on string four. So you play string one and string four, both at the same time, making sure that the note that you're playing on string one is an F. Now, can you do the F with the D, followed by the E, happy with that, add the D in the middle. F with string 4, D, E with string 5. After 2, 1, 2. Do it gently, it's much more likely to work for you. Now we're going to go back to the beginning of that line. You've got a low A and you've got a bass note A. So you're playing string three and string five both together. See if you can join it onto the rest of the notes in that bar. There is one note in that line 
that I would like to leave out for the moment. I do find that most of my pupils, when they play this, they can play all of the line really quite happily unless they put in this note here. The lower note of that pair. So I leave it out until they're happy with that first line of the main section, we leave that note out. When you're happy with it, we can put it in. So we'll play that entire first line of the main section with the three bass notes that we're going to play. I'll play it to you first. And as I said, the next line is almost exactly the same apart from the very last note being shorter. Now you may want to put in those notes that we left out in section A. The note is a low A. It's the underneath note on the second bar of section A. So what you're going to need to do is put your finger on that A, thumb plays that string, your first finger will be playing the E, play them together, make sure you can really hear them both, make sure your finger isn't leaning back and spoiling that E right on its end there. Add that in when you're happy with line two without it. Now we're coming on to section B, which starts on the last two notes there. What I'd like you to do first is to play me the first two lines, first two notes on the next line. Those are the first two notes of bar 14, which will be a D and a bass note E, which is string six. Then we're going to add on the two notes in front of it. So we go D on its own, C on its own, and then the pair of notes, D and the bass note. So it will go like that. After three, one, two, three. Now go on to bar 15. There's a C and a string five bass note A, add the note in front of it, B, C, with the bass note A. Now join those two bits up, so it will go and you're adding the bass notes in the right places. After three together, one, two, three. And now we're going to do the same with the next bit. You play B and E on bar 16 together and then add the two notes in front of it. You play the A and the A in bar 17 together and then you add the G sharp in front of it. So you're gradually building it up. Then you can play from the B A B up to the end of section B. After three, one, two, three. And now we're going to do section B all the way through. After three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. 
In section C, we're going to start on the last note of line four, the A, but before you play that, make sure that the first pair of notes on line five, D, and a string four D, sound nice. So like we did in section B, we're going to go like that. So we add on the note in front. It should be smooth and clear. And then you can do the same with the first pair of notes in bar 19. C and string five, add on the note in front. Like that. Then you can add those two bits together. Make sure it's nice and smooth and clear. When we go on to the next bit, you may notice that it's very similar to the line in front of it, line four. So it goes B, A, B with string six, two G sharps, and A with string five, where before you went B, A, B, one G sharp, and an A. This time you just got two G sharps. It's the same thing, pretty much. And then in the second half of section C, it's pretty much the same. Except that G sharp has gone back to a single one again. So here's the whole of section C to play along with. After two, one, two. the whole of the main section. We're going to go from the beginning of line two to the end of line six. There is a pair of repeat marks there. Normally we'd play the whole middle section twice, but if you were going to do it in an exam, you wouldn't do that repeat. I'm not going to play it now. After two, one, two. to be a fairly slow tune. If you want to play it more slowly, that's fine. If you want to slow the video down, that's possible also. Have a look at um, the way you're playing it on your device and see how you slow it down. You can slow down the playback speed if you want to. Now we're going to deal with the introduction and the ending. It uses fingered bass notes that you may or may not be familiar with, but they're not difficult, difficult ones. A is string five, no frets. B, string five, fret two. C, string five, fret three. And then D is string four, fret nothing. And E, string four, fret two. So those first eight notes go a, B, C, D, E, 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 E. Play that with me again. After two, one, two. And then you have two more bass notes. A D, string four, no frets. A B, string five, fret two. So those bass notes up to there will go. And that is the same in both the introduction 
and the ending. The difference between the two lines comes right at the end in the last two bars. On the first line you go string six and then you'll strum a chord that goes G sharp B E. At the end of the last line you play string five and you play it strum the chord that goes A, C, E. Again, you're going to need to have your fingers right on their ends so that they don't lean over and sit on other strings. It should sound nice and clear and you should be able to play the strings individually and still have nice clear notes. So here is the first line, the introduction, after two, one, two. line the ending after two one two the whole of the introduction and the ending that is the whole of line one and line seven should be played with your right hand thumb mostly resting your fingers on string one. So here is line seven, this is how it should go. We'll need to think about the dynamics before we play the entire thing. As I say, it doesn't need to go fast. Take it as slowly as you like, make it sound expressive. MP, near the beginning, is medium quiet, and then there's a crescendo through the first set of bass notes. Poco rit means slow down a bit, and then when you get to the next line, a tempo means go back to your original speed, whatever it was you were doing to start with. MF medium loud at the end of section A for section B you're playing P quiet in section C you go to medium loud again and then at the end of line 5 it's loud just plain loud last line is loud with a diminuendo towards the end getting quieter and rit molto means slow down a lot it makes it feel more like an ending when you do that slow down so we're going to play the whole piece now we're not going to do the repeat in the middle section as i said you wouldn't do it in the exam and it is just the whole bit again so from the beginning one, two. 